Fried Angus beef, top sirloin steaks, $8.99 per pound. Hot deal on DiGiorno 12-inch pizzas, only $7.99. Save $1.40 on Lay's potato chips, $2.99 for a 6.5-ounce bag. $3.79 for a 64-ounce carton of ShopRite premium orange juice. Visit our website at www.marketplace.bm for more super specials. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Thursday, February 7th. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us. Another brazen armed robbery today, this time at the Esso Tiger Mart service station in Warwick. Two men brandishing a firearm and a knife held up a store employee and demanded cash. Now police are on the hunt for the pair who made good their escape on foot. It's the second armed robbery in the space of a week. Armed police officers arrived at the scene soon after receiving a report around 4.20 p.m. today of two suspects who targeted the Esso Tiger Mart service station in Warwick. Details are still emerging, but it appears that two males between 5 foot 10 and 6 feet, medium built, wearing all black and a full face helmet, they entered into that said premises. They brandished what appears to be a bladed article and a firearm. The those two men made demands of money. Now they're given an undisclosed amount of cash and they left the area. The assailants reportedly headed in a westerly direction on foot, but it's unknown whether a getaway vehicle was used. Have there been any links made to the recent robbery at the Ice Queen in Paget? Again, still early days. We have an active uh, investigation has just commenced. We have officers from the forensic support unit that have just now got on scene. We also have uh, officers from the CID who are on scene. So they're going to be putting together the uh, information that is forensically, that is eyewitness accounts, and doing the old-fashioned walking around and asking the questions of people in the area. Was the CCTV equipment operational? Again, CCTV will play a feature in the investigation. The business owner and opposition leader Craig Cannonier arrived at the scene shortly after the incident and sends an urgent appeal to the public to come forward with any information that may help in the police investigation. Right now I'm a bit, uh, bit angry, uh, a bit concerned about our manager. Uh, he's a great guy uh, to have to go through this experience. What I would say is this, and all I have to say is, this is the second robbery in a very short period of time. Uh, we saw what happened at Ice Queen at gunpoint. Now we have another gunpoint. Uh, Bermuda, you know who these guys are. I'm sure somebody will know. I'm appealing to you. We've got to stop this. While there were no reported injuries, Mr. Cannonier says his staff are the victims of this ordeal. To sit down and look at him, he's shaken, just disturbed. Uh, to see a man to have to go through that is not right. It is not right. Um, so I'm just appealing to Bermuda, really, listen, we got to take care of one another. This is not the way to do it. Mr. Cannonier confirming that his CCTV cameras at the establishment are fully functional and were recently upgraded, which he hopes will help lead to the capture of the suspects. We asked whether the use of tinted visors in this latest incident is a concern worth addressing. My mind is certainly not on, you know, visors and helmets and the likes. Uh, my concern right now is the employees. Uh, we've got some people who are shaken up. We've got some customers uh, that had kids in there that are pretty shaken up over this ordeal. And to have it happen broad daylight uh, and with precision like this here is of major, major concern. Uh, we'll, we'll get to the politics of helmets and that kind of a thing later. Uh, I'm, I'm shaken up myself right now. Anyone who may have information that can assist in the investigation is asked to contact police on 295-0011 or the confidential Crime Stoppers hotline on 800-8477. A coroner's inquest into the death of Mark Dombrowski, an American University rugby player who fell from a height into an old moat at Fort Prospect, has been ruled as an accidental death or misadventure. The coroner found that based on all the evidence, the 19-year-old died of a head injury sustained by a 30 five-foot fall last year. The St. Joseph's University freshman went missing from Front Street on March 18th last year, the night before he was due to depart for Philadelphia with his rugby teammates. Dombrowski was on island for a sevens rugby tournament. The team went for a night out in Hamilton and Dombrowski was captured on CCTV, leaving the doghouse bar, heading in an easterly direction along Front Street. He eventually walked along Middle Road in Devonshire. The coroner noted in her verdict that she accepted evidence from the analysts that no one was seen behind or in front 
front of him during this time. Mark's teammate Andrew Sullivan told detectives that Mark was in a happy mood when he saw him at the doghouse that night, but his attitude changed as the night progressed. Later on, he said Mark punched a pillar outside the bar and that he offered Mark $30 cash take a taxi back to the work regiment where the team were staying. However, Mark told him he did not want to talk, cursed him, and refused the money. Sullivan messaged Mark around 2 a.m. to ask his whereabouts, but there was no reply. Another teammate, Jack Heffernan, said to investigators that Mark had confided in him earlier in the visit that he was having troubles with his girlfriend. He said that Mark went for a walk alone on a previous occasion down to a nearby beach, but later returned to the regiment headquarters. The body of Mr. Dombrowski was discovered by a search party, including members of the public, police, and rugby organizers. He was found with his cell phone intact. A telecommunications analyst of the phone's data saw that an outgoing call was made to a George Harris just after 1 a.m., but was never answered. Data roaming services were also switched off. According to a post-mortem report, Mark Dombrowski died of a head injury caused by a fall from height, and pathological evidence showed no one else was involved in the death. Traces of ethanol and THC, the active ingredient in cannabis, were were shown to be present, as stated in his toxicology report. The Nebraska family requested the inquest into his death, which took place over two days in December. Acting Senior Magistrate Max Ann Anderson said the purpose of this inquest was to determine who the deceased was and to find out how, when, and where was the cause of death. She also stressed the inquest was not framed to determine any criminal or civil liability. At the end of the inquest in December, the Dabrowski family had expressed that the investigation had focused too heavily in certain areas and not enough in others. They explained that Mark suffered a left shoulder injury as a result of the competition and was tired at the end of the tournament. He was described as a loving, caring, and kind brother and son who had many friends. Magistrate Anderson delivered the verdict that Mr. Dombrowski's death was accidental or by misadventure and expressed her sincere condolences to the family of Mark Dombrowski. The Bermuda Police Service states it conducted a thorough professional investigation and hopefully the coroner's findings will bring some closure to the matter, adding this was a tragic accident that greatly impacted the Dombrowski family and indeed the whole community and continues to extend condolences to the family and friends of Mark Dombrowski. Well, the Bermuda Health Council board today acknowledging their decision to have one of their executives cut business ties with a former Leahy Medical Clinic chief due to a perceived conflict of interest. Chairman of the council, Dr. Alicia Stubble Washington, stated in a release in May 2016, then program manager Dr. Ricky Brathwaite incorporated a company called Diana Group International, standing for Dynamic Youth Envisioning New Ideas for Change, with Ms. Linda Moulton, then CEO of International and executive programs for the Leahy Med Medical Center, a program that Dr. Brathwaite began in 2001 as a university student. They explain Ms. Moulton and Dr. Brathwaite met in Bermuda and partnered to expand mentoring and young development youth development support to underserved communities in the U.S. and other countries outside of Bermuda. The board discussed the potential conflict of interest of the arrangement in June of 2016, which resulted in the decision for Dr. Ricky Brathwaite not to engage further due to the potential perceived conflicts with Ms. Moulton's then-employer, Leahy International. The Dianic Group International business was immediately terminated in June 2016, one month after conception. Dr. Brathwaite says he has never engaged in relationships with any aspect of the Leahy business or Dr. Ewart Brown outside of his official capacity at the Health Council. He now serves as acting CEO and Director of Health Economics at the Bermuda Health Council. We'll have more for you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. Toyota commercial vehicles from Bermuda Motors are the smart business choice. They're fuel efficient, durable, and provide exceptional performance. Bermuda Motors maintains an inventory of Toyota genuine parts and has Toyota factory trained technicians. So don't risk buying a secondhand or gray market truck from someone you don't know. Whether you run a large fleet or single commercial vehicle, choose Toyota from Bermuda Motors, the smart business choice. The Marketplace Food Court is you and your family's one-stop shop. Start your day at the breakfast bar with omelets made to order and traditional Bermuda codfish breakfast. The chefs will cook lunch and dinner to your liking, along with the salad bar, sandwich bar, 
sushi bar, and fruit bar, the Marketplace Food Court is your kitchen away from home. Every day is hassle-free with nutritious meals from the Marketplace Food Court. Visit us seven days a week. Homemade cooking, quality service, all at prices you can count on. At Argus, our interest is you. Each of you around here. We know that when two people seem the same, they can have very different insurance needs for their health, home, work, and future. Which is why we take the time to get to know you as an individual so we can provide insurance coverage that fits your life. Because after all, our interest is you. One of the island's leading advocates for children and families has described social media and the internet as one of the biggest threats facing families in Bermuda. The warning comes from Martha Dismont, who chairs the Interagency Committee for Children and Families, which is ramping up its promotional efforts on behalf of children. Mrs. Dismont says gone are the days when parents could keep a close eye on who their children are interacting with. Here's Bermuda Broadcasting's Tarai Trot with our story. According to Martha Desmond, families in Bermuda already have enough to worry about in order to survive, and the advent of social media is something families now must adapt to. It's one of the biggest threats. It's one thing to be able to manage your family and know who the friends are that your child is seeing, uh, to be able to control where your child goes. It's another thing to have this infinite internet that even though you put controls on, on how much access a child has when they use it, a young person has, but still there are ways in which not only do uh, the, the young person or the child find ways to still access, but now we also have individuals hacking in to them unsolicited. So it is one of the dangerous tools. Sexting, texting, and bullying that takes place on social media, Mrs. Dismont describes it as the silent killer as parents often are unaware of the situation. Another worry of Mrs. Dismont, who is also head of the Family Center charity, is that families in Bermuda are still not in a position to meet their basic needs. Uh, we will continue to struggle if we have a population that is simply not in position to be uh, living a normal quality of life in Bermuda. And therefore, what we need from not just donors, but the community, is to begin to invest in what I call the weakest link of our society and those that are, who seem to be without opportunity, without the necessary skills, without the support to be given a hand up. Not a hand up, but simply a hand up, uh, which is for me about empowerment. Bermuda, recently named by Time magazine as the most expensive place to live in the world. For some, it may be just a title, but for families, it's becoming unbearable. Uh, the high costs in Bermuda are difficult for families. They're difficult for middle income. And so uh, we also need to find a way to reduce the costs uh, of living in, in Bermuda, as we all talk about. The Interagency Committee for Children and Families, which includes many family charity agencies, is hoping its latest efforts to ramp up awareness will result in enough financial support so they can hire what they call an independent advocate. So this year we are looking for donors to provide funding to ensure we can bring on a full-time person that will be an objective advocate who's simply looking to make sure that agencies are supported around their advocacy issues, that uh, IEC itself can advocate for the issues that we're all concerned about without being worried about the individual resources of agencies. Continuing on with our second installment of our sit-down interview with the Attorney General Kathy Simmons on government's new policy on naming pedophile inmates due to be released. The minister is holding firm to the policy, despite some feeling that such alerts only serve to panic the public. She spoke to Tarai Trot. My thoughts are clear on that. If you have a sex offender who is not responsive to treatment and has served his or her time, um, they will be released whether we like it or not. And in those instances where you have an offender who does not see the error of their ways or who, as I said, is not responsive to treatment, our responsibility to ensure public safety is absolutely um, the priority. And another idea floating around is that child sex offenders should automatically be required to report to the nearest police station on a regular basis. 
What do you think about that? Well, the, the conditions of the release will be very specific. Um, once they're on the register, there will be regular reporting, particularly when their um, circumstances changes. They're required to report change of address, change of um, um, occupation, and so on and so forth. So at every stage of their release, um, their movements are monitored and they are very well supervised. And there's a lot of research that has to go into the particular um, um, condition of pedophiles. And there's been quite a bit of interest from members of the public and public interest groups with that particular segment. We do have expertise in our psychologist group with regard to those offenders, but as I said before, our main objective is to ensure the safety of members of the community. Thanks to I Weather now, and let's head over to the AccuWeather headquarters for the latest. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. This AccuWeather forecast on ZBM has been brought to us by the good folks at the BFNM Insurance Group. We have high pressure in control, and that paves the way for some pretty pleasant weather for the next couple of days. Uh, the most recent little boundary, little just. to that when it comes to rainfall a few spotty showers most of them will stay away to the north temperatures around 67 to 68 degrees across our fair island we're around uh, the humidity of 85 percent though so it is kind of humid out there and the wind is light from the north at five to ten knots so because of the light wind waves are fairly small pretty good boating weather is what we're dealing with so we have waves of one foot or less on the inside on the outside three to five foot wave heights and uh, no marine or boating advisory so that's some good news here as uh, we uh, are always pleased to string a few days together like this for our boating friends high tide is going to be at 10:22 tonight it goes back out early in the morning on friday another high tide will be at 10:35 friday morning and then a low tide at 4:46 in the late afternoon so it's a partly cloudy night tonight most of the showers stay to the north by a few dozen miles and uh, we'll be dealing with a mostly sunny day tomorrow great day for us highs in the upper 60s uh, and nice uh, pleasant weather will continue for another day or two when we look at the future cast you can see uh, high pressure with that broad clockwise flow is centered just off to our west this storm system, though, off to the west is going to lead to a, a wind shift. You can see that uh, change in the wind. It's a northwest wind off of the coast of the United States. That's a front that will be pushing into our area in a couple more days. But we still have some breathing room before any of those changes roll in. There are some scattered showers down into the Caribbean and Jamaica, Barbados, and in Trinidad. No tropical threats here during the hurricane off season. And when we look at the travel outlook for eastern North America and into London, we do have uh, temperatures changing with a, a big drop in readings across most of the east after one more mild day for New York and Boston. Temperatures are going to be plummeting. You can see Atlanta and Boston are on the same page. Uh, typically, Atlanta is much milder or warmer than Boston. Uh, so in this case, the cold is coming from west to east, and uh, we're going to be dealing with a chill down into the weekend. So uh, in Toronto, colder air, 30 degrees is reaching that area a little earlier. Miami, 80. And then in London, we have some showers and 52 degrees into the United Kingdom. Looking at our forecast, again, good weather tonight, fair weather for Friday, and then that next system will produce some scattered showers uh, on Saturday, especially late in the day as the next front rolls in. Behind that cold front, we will see a significant drop in temperature. It'll be about 7 degrees cooler into Sunday, and by Monday and Tuesday, we'll begin to warm back up. By the time we reach Tuesday, we'll jump back up to 69 degrees, and that's pretty much where we begin with this forecast. We'll send it back to you. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We provide education, early detection, radiation treatment, and support for cancer to all. We provide in-home care, financial assistance, and emotional support to cancer patients and their families. We provide financial support and enhanced quality of life for patients and their families in hospice care. We will. We will. We will.
Surface Trends is proud to offer Bermuda's best selection of natural and exotic stone, carefully selected and imported from Italy and Brazil. We also stock the newest collection from Caesar Stone and Sile Stone. Don't forget our wide variety of gorgeous porcelain wood plank tiles, including our exclusive Bermuda cedar tile, as well as natural travertines suitable for outdoors and indoors. Bathroom and pool tiles are in stock too. Stop by our showroom at 17 Serpentine Road, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1. Thanks for staying with us. Eye-opening figures as the Bermuda Tourism Authority's 2018 year-end visitor arrivals report shows 12 quarters of back-to-back record-breaking years. Tourism Minister Zane De Silva is off-island, but Shadow Minister of Tourism and Transport Leah Scott says the stats are impressive, not just for tourism, but also for the hospitality industry. They have produced their report of statistics, and for uh, a third year, they have uh, a great economic comeback. And I think what the, the, the main uh, relevance of this, Mike, is that while we have had America's Cup 35 as one of our economic indicators, the BTA has demonstrated that they are able to sustain themselves on their own. And this has been purely the efforts of the BTA under the leadership of Kevin Dallas. And he has done a fantastic job. And he states in, his, uh, in the release that this is a comeback story for Bermuda, and it absolutely is. We have had record-breaking numbers of uh, vacationers for the second year in a row. We've had the highest number of arrivals since 2002. Total visitor spending went past $500 million, which is phenomenal. And cruise passenger arrivals were up 34% during the non-summer months, which is just amazing. So I'd like to congratulate the BTA on their efforts. And interestingly enough, just following up on the interview that you and I had earlier today, talking about Bermudians in the hotel industry, the uh, the employment of Bermudians has gone up 23% between 2016 and 2018. However, Mike, we've got to get that number higher, and we've got to get Bermudians in those senior level and mid-management level positions. And Bermudians need to be able to enjoy the fruits of their own country. So I'm really excited about this. Still to come, Earl Bays, and we'll have all the latest sports news in just a few minutes. At the Bermuda Festival, classic rock comes to the stage in February. Janis Joplin is remembered as one of the most successful female rock stars of her era. As an interpreter of her music, actress singer Mary Bridget Day in her tribute to the late singer. She garnered a Tony Award nomination for Best Lead Actress in a Musical for her role as Janis Joplin in A Night with Janis Joplin. For tickets, visit PTIX or BermudaFestival.org. Celebrating the empowerment of women, she is art. 44th Annual Bermuda Festival. You can count on us. Value-packed fresh Purdue chicken thighs or drumsticks, only $1.99 per pound. Save $1.40 on Bermuda-grown cauliflower, $2.59 per pound. Save $1.36 on Schmidt Old Time Sliced Butter Bread, $4.59 for a 24-ounce loaf. General Mills Honey Nut Cheerios, 10.8-ounce box, only $4.59. New Fresh Pet, pet food, 20% off on all sizes and varieties. All stores open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. Toyota Rush, Bermuda's biggest SUV with seven seats. There's always plenty of room. Available at Bermuda Motors. Bermuda men's national football team will face Cuba later this month. Women's national coach asked to be a mentor for a Jamaican grassroots football coach. And the Bermuda School Sports Federation hosts their senior school cross-country championships. Earl Basin has the details and more in tonight's sports report. Responding to a query from Bermuda Broadcasting Sports, Bermuda Football Association President Mark Wade revealed that the Bermuda men's senior national team will take on Cuba later this month. We're 
Well on the way to finalizing a tour to Cuba for the senior men's national team. Just waiting on confirmation from, or acceptance, I should say, from FIFA and CONCACAF to sanction the match. But all the necessary eyes are being dotted and T's being crossed, and, and the team should have um, a good good match to, to gauge where they are and have, give the opportunity to some other players, and it should be a, a good warm-up. In a letter addressed to the Bermuda Football Association, Patrick Reed, a grassroots coaching student in Jamaica, is requesting for Bermuda's national women's coach, Nikita Robinson, to be his mentor. Reed writes, quote, I am interested in pursuing a career in coaching women's football as a secondary career. I am presently studying coaching at the grassroots level. I recently completed a course with USA Soccer and received a license to coach 9v9 at the grassroots level. These courses require me to have a mentor from any anywhere in the world to guide me along my learning process. He goes on to write, I would like to choose Nikita Robinson from your National Academy as my mentor, although I am Jamaican living in Jamaica. Field Town are bringing Manchester City scoring legend and Sean Goater to work with the struggling League Two club's youngsters. The 48-year-old Bermudian is the latest name to join manager Sol Campbell's staff since he arrived in October. A day after bringing you the results of the Bermuda School Sports Federation's Middle School Cross Country Championships, it was the turn of the senior schools at the Arboretum yesterday. Zoe Hasselkos from Summersfield Academy won the under-16 girls division in a time of 13.42. Miron Simmons from Bermuda High School finished second in 14 minutes flat, while Liana Medeiros from Mount St. Agnes rounded out the top three finishes with a time of 14.11. The Barclay Institute's Kazai Seeley won the much-anticipated under-16 boys race when he stopped the clock in the time of 11.17. He was followed by Saltish Trio of Tommy Marshall in 11.32, Nairobi Smith Mills in 12.04, and Sencho Smith in 12.54. Ashley Irby from Saltish Grammar School continues to dominate this event, having never lost a Bermuda School Sports Federation cross-country championship. Irby easily won the over-16 girls race in a time of 13.11. Kayla Raymond from Mount St. Magnus finished second in 13.59, and Warwick Academy's Skylar Paul finished third in a time of 1445. Barclay Institute's Ryan Otterbridge topped the podium in the over-16 boys division. Otterbridge started to pull away with Raekwon Woodley-Smith from Cedarbridge Academy after the first lap. The two remained within sight until the last lap when Otterbridge pulled away to win by 27 seconds with a time of 1559. Woodley-Smith finished second in 1626 and Nicholas Pilgrim from Warwick Academy finished third in 1655. Three of the top skippers in world match race rankings, the reigning Open Women's and Youth World Champions, are among the first eight entrants of the 2019 Argo Group Gold Cup, the oldest match racing regatta for one design yachts and offering $100,000 in prize money. The 2019 Argo Group Cup is scheduled for May 6th through to the 11th. A total of 188 points were scored in a double header as the Bermuda Basketball Winter League continued inside the Bermuda College Gymnasium last evening. In the opener, the Smith Court Kings would fall 45-36 to the St. George's Hoop Stars. The young St. George's Hoop Stars were led to victory by Kanik Wilson, who scored a game-high 24 points. He would also have five rebounds, four assists, and six steals. While Richard Medeiros would score nine points for the Smith Court Kings, he would also grab four rebounds and two steals. In the second game of the night, the Wark Rim Rockers defeated the Somerset Tsunamis 59-48. to Both Noah Brown and Michael Franklin would bow out of the Men's Carter Squash Classic in Toronto. In his second round match, Franklin would take on the number five seed, Patrick Rooney, from England and would fall in straight games that took 36 minutes, 12-10, 11-9, 11-7. Brown would face off against the number three seed, Shah Khan from Pakistan. He would fall in four games, 5-11, 11-7, 11-9, 11-7, in their 52-minute battle. John Lejour concluded competing at the Noram Moguls Skiing Cup event in Vermont. On day two, Lejour would compete in the Duels Moguls. He would finish 33rd in a field of 65 dual mogul skiers with a score of 70.89. I'm Earl Basden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. And that's our program for this evening. I'm Jasmine Patterson. Thanks for watching. Good night. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company.